Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 23 of Book 6. Now before we begin the proposition, I have to define what a compound ratio is. Now according to the book that I've been using as my reference manual, um, Euclid simply uses the term compound ratios without previously defining them, so they have been retroactively defined, I guess is the way to say it. So again, in the book that I'm using as my reference, if A to D, or A to D is defined as the compound ratio of A, B, B, C, and C, D. So what does that mean when we say it's the compound ratio? Well, let's assume that A to B is equal to E to F, B to C is equal to G to H, and so on and so forth. So again, we are going to define the compound ratio of A to D is also going to be equal to the compound ratio of E to K. So again, this doesn't really answer the question as to what is a compound ratio. So when I looked it up on um, math only, it defines the compound ratio if we have two ratios, MN and P and Q, is you multiply the antecedents, which is basically the first part of the ratio, so you multiply all of those together. You multiply all of the consequence, which are the second number in the ratio, and the resulting ratio of everything multiplied together, in other words, in this example, NP and NQ, this ratio is the compound ratio. So carrying this further, so let's describe it more precisely, the compound ratio of A to D is A times B times C compared to B times C times D, or since these all hold, the compound ratio of A to D is also the compound ratio of E to K, which is E times G times J compared to F times H times K. So this is the definition of the compound ratio. Now I want to um, start with what I just said on the previous slide and look at it in terms of fractions, because if we look at it fractions, it might be a little more intuitive given all the algebra that we have learned in high schools. So I have A to D is equal to A to D, obviously, and then I'm multiplying it by the number 1, BC divided by BC. So this does not affect the ratio. And then I'm going to rearrange it so that I have A over B, B over C, and C over D. So A to D is equal to this relationship right here. And then going back to A to B is equal to E to F, B to C, and so on, I take A to B and replace it with E to F, G to, B to C is replaced with G to H, and C D is replaced from J over K. And finishing up, just rewriting everything, I now have that A to D is equal to E times G times J divided by F times H times K. So again, this is just a repeat of what I said before, but sometimes I find it simpler to look at ratios as fractions, although they're not the same thing, the math works the same way because I just find it easier to visualize what's going on given all the rules and all the years that I've been learning algebra. So again, this is the definition of the compound ratios, which you will see in our proposition, we are talking about the ratio compounded by the ratio of their sides. So we needed to have this definition for this proposition. So let's carry on to the proposition. So this proposition, what is it stating? It's stating that if I have two parallelograms, that the ratio of the areas of the parallelograms will be the compounded ratio of their sides. Or in other words, the A times B times B times C, so this side by this side multiplied together, and then C times E and E times F, again, these two sides multiplied together, that the ratio of the areas of these two parallelograms will be equal to the ratio 
of the two sides multiplied together. So let's prove this. The first thing that we need to do is we need to line up our parallelograms so that, um, oh, I forgot to mention these are equal angular parallelograms. So because they're equal angular, we can line them up in such a way that DE and BG are straight lines. First thing we're going to do is draw out AD and draw out FG so that we create a new parallelogram, DG. So we start with the line K. And then using the propositions 12 of book 6, we're going to construct another line L such that the ratio of BC to CG, so the ratio of this line to this line, will be equal to the ratio of K to L. So now we have K to L is equal to BC to CG, which are these lines here, BC to CG. And we're going to do this again, and we're going to construct another line M, such that the ratio of L to M is equal to CD to CE. So it'll be the ratio of these two lines. So these three lines just simply represent the ratios of BC to CG and DC to CE. Now K to M is the compound ratio of K to L. So it's equal to BC times CD divided by CG to CE, or the ratio of that. So again, here is where the compound ratio is being used. Now, let's look at these two parallelograms. We have BC to CG is the ratio of the bases, and since they have equal height or share parallels as what it says in the uh, proposition one of this book, since they have the same height and then the areas of these two parallelograms will be proportional to the ratio of their bases. So BC to CG will be equal to the area of AC to CH. So the area of these two parallelograms. And now let's look at K to L is equal to BC to CG. So the ratio of K to L is equal to AC to CH. AC to CH. Okay, so, so far so good. Now let's do the same thing with DG and CF. And in this case, the bases would be DC and CE. So here are the bases and they are sharing a parallelogram. So again, the area of these two parallelograms will be proportional to the length of their bases. So CD to CE will be equal to the ratio of the area of this pink parallelogram to the green parallelogram. And again, LM is equal to CD to CE. So LM is equal to the ratio of the two parallelograms. Okay, so we have that KL is equal to the ratio of these two parallelograms and LM is the relation between these two parallelograms. So according to um, the proposition 22 of book five, if we have two ratios that are equal, we can basically remove this CH and this CH so that K to M will be equal to AC to CF. So we have that the ratio of K to M is equal to the ratio of these two parallelograms. But K to M was equal to the compounded ratio of the sides. So we have K to M is equal to something here and K to M is equal to something here. So rewriting it, we have that the area of this blue parallelogram compared to the green parallelogram, that ratio will be equal to the compounded ratio of the sides, BC times CD and CG times CE. And there is our proof that equal angular parallelograms are the ratio of the area between two equal angular parallelograms is also equal to the ratio 
of the sides multiplied together. And that's it.